What's good, YouTube? Crown Jewel from Crown Jewel Boxing. Back to drop a gem. Um, I'm just going to take today off, but I got a little motivation from my cousin out there on the West Coast in Cali. Cousin Reggie Woodson, thanks for the motivation. You're right, it's a couple topics in uh, boxing that I've developed over the last 24 hours that I feel like I should give my two cents on. Um, first, Shakur Stevenson went to Twitter and uh, let it be known that he's down to the number seven and eighth ranked contenders in the WBC's top 10 list, trying to find an opponent to fight so he can become the mandatory. Um, remember, it was ordered for him and Isaac Pitbull Cruz. Um, he declined. Vasily Lomachenko, the number one ranked contender, he's already in negotiations to fight. Um, Devin Haney for the title, so of course he wouldn't be interested in the eliminator. Um, Zapata said no. And also, George Cambosa said no. And, I mean, I think we all understand George Cambosa saying no, coming off of two losses, his first two losses and two tough fights with Devin Haney. You know, he would probably need a fight or two to get himself ready to get back to that, that level. So I understand that. But now he's down to the seventh and eighth ranked contender, trying to find somebody willing to fight him so he can become the number one. I think if these two guys decline, the WBC should automatically name Shakur Stevenson as the mandatory the number one contender because – you can't continue to penalize a guy and hold him off from getting a title shot because nobody else wants to fight him. And being as though these guys are that apprehensive about getting in the ring with him, I mean, says it all. He deserves to be the mandatory. So after Devin and, and, and uh, Lomachenko get it on, if neither of these two guys are willing to fight him to become mandatory, Shakur Stevenson should become the mandatory. Also, Adrian Broner, um, recent signee to BLK Prime, a company in Terrence Crawford over there, um, came out and made a statement about um, BLK Prime paying good money and allowing him to fight, you know, who he wants to fight. And kind of implying that while he was on PBC, while they did pay him well, but in order to make the money he made, he had to fight against Godzilla. So I think he's kind of admitting to um, taking easy fights for large amounts of money. I don't fault Adrian Broner. Adrian Broner has had one of the toughest schedules of any superstar box in recent years. I think um, he was moved kind of quickly, moved up and weight quickly, and kind of matched up in a rough way, which negatively impacted his career. Um, I think, you know what I'm saying, they tried to move him the way Floyd moved, but the way Floyd moved as a They tried to do what Floyd did with him. What Floyd did over eight, nine years, they tried to do with him in two or three, and it was just too much, too fast. So if anybody deserves a couple, you know, cherry pick fights to get their feet wet and get back in good standing in the sport of boxing, it's Adrian Broner. And we all know he's entertaining. He sells and people do like to see him fight. And I, for one, would like to see him get back in top form and, um, you know, get his confidence back and become a competitive fighter in that 140-pound division. So, you know, I'm not mad at you, Adrian Broner. Handle your business. Get your money. Um, lastly, um, there's been some whispers of Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford possibly starting negotiations soon. I hope that is right, because although I have reported that I felt like Terrence Crawford made a tough business decision, a poor business decision by having the fight against David Avenesian on BLK Prime with no real marketing or promotion for the fight, and um, the fight just not doing what I thought it would do or should do, a fighter of his caliber should do, and put him in a bad bargaining state, negotiation state when it comes to him and Earl Spence. It is still the biggest fight in boxing. Still the biggest fight in the welterweight division since uh, Sugar Ray Leonard and Thomas Hitman Hearns. Back then, he was the Motor City Cobra Hearns. But it's the biggest welterweight showdown since then. Um, and I think it will be the fight that everybody expected Oscar De La Hoya and Felix Trinidad to be. Although Felix Trinidad and De La Hoya never really lived up to it. I think Terrence Crawford and Earl Spence will be a can't miss. Um, I do have Earl Spence still picked to win that fight. But by no stretch of the imagination will it be an easy fight. I just think his pressure, size, and strength will be too much. But again, you know, none of us know for sure what's going to happen in that fight. When you get two fighters of that level competing against each other, you know, anything can happen. So, you know, I think if we're able to get that fight in 2023, it'll be good for boxing. Um, again, all them lightweights out there, stop ducking Jersey. Newark, New Jersey, stand up. Shakur Stevenson got these guys running. He is now boxing's boogeyman. It's certified. I've, I, haven't, I don't know last time I've seen somebody go through four or five guys 
um, offering him to be his his counterpart in a mandatory to become a, a you know to get a shot at the WBC title. These guys uh, uh, just seem to be scared to death of him, and you know I mean that speaks volumes for his level of a talent, um, and how difficult people think he is to fight, and how um, guys just don't like their chances against a guy like that. And if that's the case, you know. Like I said, within another 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 guy or two decline within another couple of weeks, WBC just do the right thing and make um Shakur Stevenson the uh the mandatory number one contender. And with that being said, that's all I have for y'all tonight. Until next time, keep your hands up, your chin down, and your ass off the floor. Peace. <laughs>